let's go into the detail. This is the ischemia trial, coronary artery disease and ischemia severity. An update and a reanalysis of some components of the ischemia trial. It was published this month, September of 2021. Patients with stable coronary artery disease and moderate or severe ischemia would benefit from revascularization. In other words, if you've got junk in your pipes, if we go in and put a new vessel in there, a new pipe, then you're gonna benefit. That was the assumption. For this study, they had 5,179 patients with moderate or severe ischemia. They were randomized to an initial invasive or conservative management. Invasive meant you go in there and surgically either put put a stent in the existing pipe or put in a new pipe. In other words, a bypass. Conservative management was not doing those procedures. CT angiogram was used to assess anatomic eligibility. In other words, they used the CT angiogram and said, are these people having enough ischemia that we want to include them in the trial? It looked at extent and severity of the coronary artery disease using the modified Duke prognostic index, which we won't go into today. Ischemia severity was interpreted by independent core laboratories nuclear echocardiography, magnetic resonance, MRI, exercise tolerance testing. You know, the regular stuff to say, okay, does this person have ischemia? Let's stop for just a second and say, wait a minute, we're using one of those technical words that might not actually mean something to everybody listening. Ischemia, what is ischemia? It's the condition of not getting enough blood flow. So you don't get enough oxygen, you don't remove enough waste materials. And so obviously what we're talking about here is not getting enough blood flow to the arteries of the heart. And the article we're looking at, by the way, was published in the journal Circulation, which is a well-respected academic medical journal. So what were the results of comparing a randomized comparison, people that we've been saying by all standard criteria, you need a stent or you need a bypass? And what they did was they said, okay, some people are gonna get a stent or a bypass. Others not get a stent and bypass. They're gonna talk to them about lifestyle. They're gonna talk to them about medications. And we'll see who does better. So moderate or severe ischemia was associated. Remember, ischemia is that, that condition of having not enough blood going to the muscle tissue of the heart. Moderate or severe ischemia was associated with increased mortality or death rate. So it's clearly, we got that part right. It's a dangerous condition. Non-fatal MI or heart attack rates. MI stands for myocardial infarction, which again is just a physician did some of these, so he tends to speak medical ease, and I'll try to translate as we go through for you. Non-fatal heart attack rates increased with worsening ischemia severity. So again, that's underlining that doctors are getting that right. They are knowing when somebody's got increased risk for lack of blood flow to the heart tissue. Increasing coronary artery disease severity or increasing severity of ischemia was associated with death and heart attack rates. In the most severe groups, 659, the four-year death rate was lower in the invasive strategy, but four-year all-cause mortality rate was similar. So there may have been one tiny signal that for those die-hard stent and bypass guys, maybe it helps a little bit at least in the very worst group. But does it really decrease all cars mortality? Hmm. No, it doesn't. Ischemia severity was not associated with increased risk after adjusted for coronary artery disease. Invasive management did not lower all cause mortality at four years in any of those subgroups. 